Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Yesterday, we were talking about the Q&A on Jesus could do no mighty works in his own hometown. And I know I probably covered that as well as I need to, but honestly, I want to just recap that and just dig just a little bit deeper in this, okay? So let's do this. I want to, I just want to kind of recap just a little today because God's put some stuff on my heart to say. Uh, number one, let me say this. I have read this account, both accounts, uh, the one in Matthew chapter 13 as well as the account in Mark chapter 6. I have read these two accounts in no less than 25 different translations, okay? And here's a secret. There are certain translations that I think are horrendously bad, just bad, 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 bad. And sometimes I will read in those translations just to see how horribly messed up they can mess this verse up, okay? I've even read this account in the worst translations that I know of, and I've read it in my very best, as well as my Greek translations, which really mine out the Greek words and what they mean. And did you know out of all the translations, okay, I have not one of them, says that Jesus could do no miracles. Now, I say that because I have personally heard it taught that Jesus couldn't do any miracles, that Jesus himself could not heal people, and Jesus himself couldn't do any miracles. And I'm going to say this, and I hope everybody's listening. Your Bibles do not say that, and the person that's teaching that is not teaching the truth that is in God's Word, okay? Okay. I have not read one translation that says Jesus could not do any miracles. Right here, it says Jesus did not do many, many. Okay, that means he did miracles. That means he did heal people. Jesus just was not able to do as many as he normally would have done because the crowd rejected him. Now, as much as I have studied this, I believe the crowds left, and the only people that Jesus could lay hands on and heal was the ones that stayed behind. But like I said, I've read it in 25 different translations, and that's what I get from the Greek and what the words mean. Okay, but this is what I want you to, uh, I want to give you a practical uh, example of what this means. You're talking to someone, and they said, well, oh, yeah, I went to Faye's house, and, uh, you know, she cooked some hamburgers that night, but she didn't cook many. She didn't cook many hamburgers that night. Okay. Would you automatically believe that that person just said to you that I didn't cook any hamburgers, that I didn't like the grill, I didn't cook hamburgers, there were zero hamburgers, zero hamburgers served that night? Of course not. You would automatically think to yourself, well, they just said she didn't cook many hamburgers, so how many does she normally cook? I mean, what is many? Did she only cook 12, or does she usually cook 500, and she only cooked 100 that day? Or does she normally cook 25, and she only cooked 5? That's the question we need to be asking. When somebody says that Jesus couldn't do many miracles, that doesn't mean there wasn't any miracles done. That means it was a reduced amount of what he normally did right? Okay. Now, with that said, what I want to do now, and you know, and before I, I'm going to read down a list of all the stuff that Matthew and Mark saw before they went to Nazareth. Before I do that, I want to say this. In my mind's eye, when I see Jesus leaving Nazareth, I see him so broken and hurt. He has come to this town hoping to heal people and set them free and do mighty, mighty miracles in this little town of Nazareth. And he was outright made fun of, probably, but he was absolutely, positively, without doubt, rejected. And it broke his heart. I can just see him just broken, thinking about all the hurting people that remain that way because they just would not lay down their prejudice toward him and what they believed about him. And it stopped them from coming and receiving what God had sent to them through Jesus. Mm. And here's something else. Can you even imagine the Son of God, Jesus, 
leaving Nazareth and him looking at Peter going, Peter, I have no idea what happened. You know, I went over there and I laid my hand on him and nothing happened. I have no idea what happened, Peter. It just nothing happened. I laid my hand on him and nothing happened. I went over and I spoke to the dead person and they just laid there. You know, I just have no idea, Peter. I don't know what happened. I mean, it's just not in me today. Can you see Jesus believing Nazareth going, Father, I have no idea what I've done. I've done something wrong, but I'm asking you, Lord, please forgive me, Father. Forgive me because I must be a horrible man for you to take your power away from me. Father, restore me back to who I'm supposed to be so the next town I go to that I can work in your power. God, I don't, we can't even imagine Jesus having that conversation with Peter or with his father. How absurd is it that we would think that Jesus attempted to heal someone or to set them free and he didn't have any power i can't even wrap my mind around that idea uh so anyway now let me get back to what the bible really says okay i want to go down and i'm not going to do it in matthew and mark both because they're they parallel pretty good there's a couple of differences in their accounts as far as the different things jesus did before we get to Nazareth. So I'm just going to use Matthew, and I'm going to run down this, and I promise I'm not going to teach on every one of them because I'd have to do a two-hour teaching. But I am going to show you. So what I want to say is from Matthew and Mark's perspective of all the things that they had seen Jesus do before they got to Nazareth and even after Nazareth, because remember, they wrote these after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. This is a recount of what happened. Uh, so they saw all of these things prior to writing the Gospels. But, but So in comparison of what Matthew and Mark know about, not much happened in Nazareth, okay? <laughs> so let me read to you real quick because this is very interesting. So over here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, right out in, ver in uh, chapter 4 of Matthew, Jesus heals the multitude. And a multitude means thousands, okay? Now I'm going to go over to chapter 8. Jesus heals a leper, uh, starting in verse 1, it talks about that. And then in verse 5, Jesus heals the centurion's servant. Verse 14, we have uh, Peter's mother-in-law is healed of a fever. But watch, it's not just that one miracle. People found out that Jesus was there and that, Mary, that Peter's mother-in-law got healed. And now everybody, and your Bible says this, all the people, A-L-L, -L, all the people in the city, those with unclean spirits and those who were sick, all came and Jesus healed them all. The whole city got healed. I don't think sometimes we pay attention real close to what all means and multitudes this is thousands and thousands of people of stuff going on here, guys. Okay, the next time we see uh, another uh, act of Jesus, we're in verse 23. Jesus speaks to the storm and calms the storm. And this is where the boys are going like, oh my goodness, what manner of man is this that he can speak to the weather and it obeys him? They were in shock that Jesus calmed this storm just like that through just speaking to it. Okay, the next thing in... Uh, Chapter, uh, yeah, we're still in chapter 8, verse 28. The demon-possessed man from the graveyard who had lots of demons in him. And, you know, uh, they went down into the pigs. About 3,000 pigs ran off into the Lake of Galilee and drowned that day. Uh, and then starting in chapter 9, we see where Jesus healed the crippled man. And then in ver uh, verse 18, he raises uh, Jairus' daughter, the little girl. He raises her from the dead. And then he heals the lady with the issue of blood. She reaches out and touches him, remember? Uh, and then we see in verse 27, we've got the two blind men that were healed. And then in verse 32, uh, we have, what does that say? A, a mute man was healed. And then we see in chapter 12, verse 9, a man with a withered arm. And that's where they, the Pharisees wanted to set him up and stone him. Uh, but here in uh, chapter 13, this is where Jesus is rejected in Nazareth in his own hometown. But watch this. You remember Jesus said that if a city and the people in it do not receive you, dust off your shoes and keep going to the next city. And just walk away and let it go. Jesus did exactly that because he is rejected in uh, chapter 13. 
And then in chapter 14, the very next thing that it talks about is he feeds the 5,000. So where he couldn't do many mighty works and miracles in his own hometown, the next thing we see him doing is he doesn't feed just 5,000 people. He feeds 5,000 men. There was children and women there. Uh, scholars believe that Jesus fed about 18,000 people that day on the shores of the Lake of Galilee. And then we see in chapter 14, verse 22, Jesus is walking on water. And then in uh, chapter 14, verse 34, Jesus uh, heals the crowds at Garrisonet Ger 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 or whatever uh, city. Uh, forgive me for not being able to say that. Gennesaret. Okay. Uh, but what I want to show you before I close today is that can you imagine being Matthew or Mark and seeing all of this power that Jesus operated in and all of these many, many miracles and these dead raisings and healings? And, and even John says in his Gospels, uh, as he's closing, he says, and Jesus did many, many more mighty works and that are not even written down. Uh, so these are just the accounts. Uh, this is not all of the works that Jesus did, but can you imagine being one of the gospel writers walking with the Son of God and witnessing all of these miraculous things and he goes to his own hometown and he is outright rejected and he cannot perform the miracles that he went there to perform because people would not stay and listen to him and apply their faith in the power of God. Well, listen, guys, I'm going to hop off here. I love you, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.